Hey, we're gonna protect. You know what? We're gonna just. We're here for the yeah. first time today, doing the podcast. Welcome That's everybody right. to the Wolf Den podcast. Will, how are you? How yes, have Bob. you been? It's been so I'm long. It has been so long. Oh, you know, not much has changed. I uh, still don't like the new Comixology app, but we're not what? here to talk about that. Oh, right oh I heard a lot to... about that. I heard Pat Oswalt had a thing with it. I heard so yeah. much. Everybody hates it. Creators, fans, uh, famous and non-famous alike, journalists. This was for nobody. It's like when you have a perfectly nice car and someone decides that flattening the tires would make it better. Oh. What, well, what well, I wanted to talk s- about that. What we're I wanted to, to about- say at the top of the show was that I had I made myself a nice cold brew with with the beans uh-huh. that Wood gave me back in like November. Uh it's uh, I put some foam on top. Didn't mix very well. It's looking like a black and white. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so I got a spoon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little. Uh, there you go. And we'll have a nice. We'll have a nice. And so this is this is hazelnut. And vanilla cold brew, and I put a little brown sugar on top. Sounds very fancy. Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> anyway, um, today we're gonna talk about uh, the, the virtual console uh, and how everybody everybody misses the virtual console so much compared to Nintendo Switch Online. People yep. don't like that there's a subscription service to play all of your retro stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, last week at the at the at the top of the show, there was breaking news during our podcast yes. that uh, the Wii U, uh, the, the the Wii U and and 3DS virtual consoles, well, digital well, storefronts. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the eShops, the Wii U and 3DS eShops uh, will be shut down in March of 2023. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, so so. Can you re-download games that you already own after March of 2023? Yes. Any games that you have purchased before that date, you will still have access to re-download them. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I believe they said um, games can still receive updates if necessary. This coffee I'm drinking kind of sucks. It's like very sweet. I messed up. Uh, yes, it, it will still be possible to re-download games and DLC, receive software updates, and enjoy online play on the Wii U and 3DS uh, family of systems. You just can't okay. buy anything new. But I mean, it's still like a step towards disaster. It's, it's still a step towards them sucks. killing the, the, the service. Yeah, because uh, f- they are cutting off access to a lot of games. Many of them have not been ported or transferred to other systems. Many of them, uh, the Wii U is the only place it exists. Mm -hmm. And there's Uh, no physical copies. There's no backup copies that people can go out and get. Did I accidentally update to Windows 11? I'm realizing that your Discord window is different. OBS updated by graphics. Everything just sucks today. I don't don't know. I don't know your life. (laughs) No, I have a start bar. Right? Isn't there no start bar in Windows, or there's no start like 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 they like moved, tabs? They move the start button to the middle of the screen. In yeah, I don't I don't have that. I don't have that. Anyway, today I wanted to take a look at the differences between Virtual Console and Nintendo Switch Online, and maybe we could come to like a like a middle ground of what could be could be better, and we can reminisce on what what was so great about Virtual Console to begin with versus yeah. Nintendo Switch Online, but also. While we're doing that, I decided I might be doing a little bit of a shell swap. I'm afraid to switch, switch scenes in OBS. I might break something. Uh, this might hurt some people, but these are the Animal Crossing Joy-Cons. Uh, Rue ate these, and uh, these are just scuffed up. I don't know what happened. They're like all messed up. And this one, too, it's yeah. all kind of shitty. So I'm going to put uh, these Game Boy-styled uh, shells on these Joy-Cons while we're talking. Uh, right. But also, we have some people to thank. Oh, there's bu- oh, wait, what is this thing? Oh, is this like a grabber? Is this like a grabby thingy? I don't know like what the hell this thing is. Somebody in the chat tell me what this is. 
I'd love I'd love it if this is one of those grabby claws. I kind of want one of those. Why are there so many accessories? Anyway, uh, I want to thank some people in the chat before we get started, too. I want to thank... Uh, well, there's a lot of you. I want to thank Dante Mira for the 30 months. I want to thank Kale for the two months. I want to thank Sup Potato for the five hundo bits. Yo, Wolf Bros, have you heard of the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy 14? 14. I had to do math. With an expanded free trial, which you can play through the entirety of uh, Realm Reborn and the award-winning Heaven... Ex what the fuck, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Not playing a game. <laughs> um, and then we got Razzle Jazzle. Thank you for the 17 months. We got Smash Bryman. Thanks for the 6 months. We got Ariana. Thanks for the 13 months. We got S Circa. Thanks for the six months. We got Mega Man. Thanks for the five months. Thank you guys for the 32 months of good times. Thank you, Mega Man. And we got Spank Wise with six months. Thank you for And Circa said, some fine gentleman we got here. Thanks, to guys. Thanks, bros. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. Where did I get the Game Boy shells? I got them on Amazon. I think if you do exclamation point Amazon in the chat, it gives you my link. No. Oh. I think. Uh. Anyway. Will, what yes, Bob. was so great about Virtual Console? Why does everybody like it so much? Uh, well, Virtual Console, especially when it started back on the Wii, it was basically a one-stop shop for a bunch of different retro games that you could buy a la carte and just have on your Wii. We're talking games from systems like the NES, the SNES, the N64, uh, and even outside of Nintendo, like the Sega Genesis, the Graphics 16 the Mega Drive. Uh, select arcade games, if you will. It, it was just basically a way to get access to classic games that ran perfectly, that didn't suffer from any real sort of uh, input lag or you know screen issues or something like that. Uh, they presented the games not just as as they were, but as you remember them. And it was just nice to have this big library of classic and sometimes not classic games, you know, at your disposal. Back, for back when back prices. when Nintendo cared about yeah. their their retro games. So right now that's yeah. the only way you can purchase some of the original Pokemon games is through yes. through virtual console. As uh, and some people are doing it on 3DS. Is there even a virtual can you even purchase stuff on regular DS? No, right? Uh, the, no, the DSi was the first one to have an eShop, but I don't think that's still in service. Mm. So, as of right now, the 3DS is the only way to get Pokemon yeah. like Red, Blue, and Yellow, I think. Mm -hmm. can, can you Turtle. get those on Wii U? I don't think so. No. You can get Game Boy Advance games on Wii U. I remember when Dread, Metroid Dread was coming out, uh, all of the Metroid games took up the top download spots on the Wii U because all of them including the the Game Boy Advance games were available on the Wii U. Wow. Yeah. So also back then the virtual console games had really good emulation too. Uh yes. th these uh, days Nintendo has been getting a lot of crap for how poorly their emulation is. Yes. But it was really clever how they did it cuz every game wasn't just a ROM, it was contained in its own specifically designed emulator. That's why they had so many N64 games on there because every N64 game got its own special emulator. So mm. they didn't have to worry about one emulator to rule them all. They could custom make each one for the game. That's why they worked. And and, and that's probably why that version of Zelda uh, Ocarina of Time uh, was better than this one we yes. ended up getting on the Switch. Yeah. Uh, people when when that dropped, when the Switch one dropped, people did a lot of comparisons between the uh, the uh, Switch virtual or the Switch online stuff versus yeah. the stuff we got on uh, Wii U, and it was better. And even GameCube, even the even the the, the ports they did from the N sixty four to the GameCube uh, ran better. Yeah. So. Uh, it seems like they cared more about their library back then with, with the virtual console yeah. stuff. To me, it just seems like people would prefer to just get the games that they want rather than pay a monthly fee to get 
a couple of games that they want and a lot of games they could care less about. Correct. Um, um, for me personally, mm-hmm. I feel like there is room for both. But yeah, I I, I, like I agree. The way Nintendo has been handling Nintendo Switch Online has been making people pine for the days of uh, the classic virtual console style of delivering games. So, so we had a Wii. I we had like three or four virtual console games. <laughs> Yeah, and like I, I think we're a little different though because we have all of our retro stuff still. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, there is a convenience to downloading the games on Virtual Console because that's where I first played, you know, Gunstar Heroes on Sega Genesis, and that game right. is fantastic. Yeah, you we know, we had Gunstar Heroes. We had a, we had a fucking stupid collection of Virtual Console games. <laughs> we had Gunstar Heroes. And Comic Zone on the Sega Genesis. Uh, yes. And then we had, then we Comic had Zone. Bonks. And- Comic Zone's not a good game. Comic Zone, no, it's a clever game. It's got a lot of good ideas, but it is too hard for its own good. You yeah. cannot play that game without the invincibility cheat on. And don't anybody in the comments tell me otherwise. <laughs> um, and then we also had uh, Bonks Adventure and Splatterhouse from the Turbo Graphics 16 weird i i guess those th- yeah. those are all games that we would never have gotten to play otherwise right ma- and, ma- and maybe gunstar like, heroes but well comic no, zone not we're not buying gunstar heroes is an expensive game on the genesis mm. even back then so okay. it's you know it i thought comic to zone was going to be pretty expensive too i mean probably comic zone uh gets re-released a lot like it's it's in mm. the sega genesis classics collection not the switch online Genesis collection, the one you can pay thirty dollars for, like Sega finds ways to re-release that. Okay. Uh, so I don't think the price is as bad, but like, yeah, Gunstar Heroes, even back then, like I never heard of it until the Wii Virtual Console. So Virtual Console, like that's what I was saying, like offered offered a place for you to go and find classic games to try out. So I'm taking apart this Joy-Con and I'm saving the middle piece because it's going to make my life a little easier. Also, the one that they give you is black and I I just I think that the blue and uh uh blue and uh green might look a little better. So anyway, is there a way we can make a hybrid of virtual console and Nintendo Switch Online? So what's so bad about Nintendo Switch Online? I guess N64 games people were a little disappointed with I guess that they cost a lot right. more. Well, I think people are upset about uh, Nintendo Switch Online, not just because of the N64 games controversy stuff, although that just adds to it. I think people are upset because the collection of games that you get isn't great. Mm-hmm. You get the Nintendo first party stuff, fine, um, but they drip fed them out like very sporadically like we just got earthbound and earthbound beginnings you know after that's been on the wii u for ages now uh the third party games we get have been just the weirdest stuff like stuff nobody's ever heard of or necessarily even wants i i I think Um, the fact that we got earthbound was kind of a huge deal and a lot of like like people have been asking about that for like a decade (laughs) yeah (laughs) and and they finally listened, and Nintendo never, Nintendo never does things just to appease the, gonna, the 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 people yeah. on Twitter, you know. And they yeah. did, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, they did it for like two days." <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's like that was like a huge move for for, for, for them. I mean, they should have done it yeah. immediately when Nintendo Switch Online like came out. Um. And they are drip feeding all of this stuff, which is kind of like a- yeah, it, it is. That, that's I think a big, like one of the big things about it is. I mean, we the the Wii and the Wii U virtual consoles were not perfect, but at least in the Wii, I didn't follow it as much during the Wii U days. But at least in the Wii days, you would get three new games every week. I mean, and that slowed down as the Wii U's life cycle came to an end. But like the Wii U update the day. Life cycle came to an end. Yeah, exactly. Made a whole damn song about it. Yeah. 
Uh, now I, it's like you're lucky if you get a game, <laughs> a year. <laughs> Did I not have? No, I had a job when the Wii was out. Uh, like I didn't. I don't remember like buying anything on. I I don't think digital purchases were like, uh, like widely accepted yet. <laughs> it wasn't as mainstream as it yeah. was. I think that's why we only had four games. <laughs> yeah, I I yeah. You know, it wasn't I, as mainstream as it was now. And, and I still would have rather have uh purchased the game for the for the retro system because again we had everything still but that doesn't mean i mean there's plenty just because we had it doesn't mean other people you know other people maybe they didn't have a super nintendo and they want to exactly. want to play with some of exactly. that stuff like like and i again, would some of the- like i we didn't grow up with a super nintendo so my first uh my the first time i ever played super mario world all the way through was whenever snes 9x came out yeah, like and I played it like on our little compact Passario family computer. Yeah. So if the Wii was around at the time, I maybe I would have uh, done that. Maybe I would have just purchased yeah. it instead. And, yeah, and like I said, you know, I'll go back to Earthbound as a good example. When that came out on the Wii U virtual console, finding a physical copy of it was like five hundred dollars. It was mm-hmm. cheaper to buy a Wii U brand new and download Earthbound to it than it was <laughs> to try and track down a physical copy of Earthbound for your Super Nintendo. Right. So that's another reason why I think people are so upset about Nintendo Switch Online right now is because uh, <laughs> you have, you're have you limited to what you can get. Uh, I mean, it's still a lot of great stuff. Uh, yeah. And, and I, don't, I don't think it's asking too much. But uh, there could be a lot more. Maybe just yeah. maybe they should make it so that it's twenty dollars a year. You get all of these games included, and then if you want extras, here you go. And we already saw a little bit of that with like Fire Emblem. Uh, they released that Fire Emblem game that was not yeah, part of uh, Nintendo Switch Online. It was an additional like six dollar purchase or something. Yeah, which is very weird that they did that, and that game's not even yeah. available anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it was a limited time thing. Yeah. That was very strange. I'm I'm gonna I'm abandoning this uh this Joy Con shell swap. I'm not doing it anymore. I I, I was gonna I, say I can't I can't concentrate on two things at once. It's not happening. How many Joy Con shells have you swapped? Just the one, right? No, a bunch. Um You've done a bunch? Like well, swap. I've only swapped two pairs, maybe. No, right. Three or four pairs. Um, but I've opened up like eight Joy Cons, probably. Okay. Because C- uh, you know, with the thumbstick thing and everything. But uh, yeah, yeah. I've sw- I've swapped a bunch. Well, just I can I do it. it I just it's gonna you know I'm yeah. I'm gonna I'm distracted. I know now. the first time you did it, you were like. I'm never doing this again. It sucks. But but part of what makes it easy right now is is this middle piece. I don't have... Well, you know what? No, never mind. It's like barely even a problem. I'm trying to do it without taking any of the ribbon cables out. Yeah. Um. So it, should, it shouldn't be too hard. I like this, though, because th- these, these ones that I got come with buttons that are uh, Game Boy colored, like, like purple, like the purple ruby situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, McFlyer Dice says, yeah, I'll pay extra for more games. Why not? $5 each for GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, etc. I feel like if they announce that, uh, you have to pay an additional price for certain games, the internet will freak the fuck out. Well, they did already when they announced that (laughs) Switch Online expansion pack was going to be $40 or whatever the fuck it was. You know, people lost their mind. They should, if if they if they don't want people to lose their minds, and they want to do something like this, like this uh, fictitious uh, service, they have yeah. to make it so that uh, you can purchase these games without the subscription. Right, and it's like, not like it's impossible to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look at, you know, Amazon. They have, you know, you can buy movies and stuff to watch on Amazon, but then you have you know, Prime Video, where some of those movies are just free with your subscription to Prime. Or you look at 
uh, iTunes. You just buy whatever music you want or you subscribe to Apple Music and get the entire library. You know, there are models of this working. It's just Nintendo is being Nintendo about it. I also like the thing that PlayStation does, where if you're part of PlayStation Plus, you get games for a significant discount. Um, yes. Maybe they could make it so that if I want to purchase Super Mario World, I can. But if I sign up for the subscription service, I just get it. Or yeah. if I want Fire Emblem, I get it for a discount with mm -hmm. my Nintendo Switch Online subscription. And if I don't have Nintendo Switch Online, then I have to pay full price. I don't see yeah. that being a problem. Uh, Nintendo really does need an a la carte for a retro games option. Yeah, I mean, and that's what yeah. they had with Virtual Console. But I do see that. I, I think a lot of game companies are realizing that subscription models are here to stay and they make them a yeah. fuck ton of money. Yes. How many subscription services have you forgotten that you had signed up for? Yeah. Well, I had, I, you know, I keep track of my finances, so I know, but. <laughs> A lot of people don't. So I pay for PlayStation Plus, Xbox Live, and Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah. I only ever play Call of Duty Warzone on my Xbox. That is free to play, so I do not yes. need Xbox Live at all. And I play, and I never play my PlayStation, at least not even online. So right. I pay for these services for no fucking reason. <laughs> Nintendo Switch Online I use all the time right. um, but yeah um, they, they, so that's what I mean they, they, they know that if they have a subscription service people are going to pay for it without realizing it and not even need it or use it um, yeah I'm paying for it for the for the for the convenience of one day I'm going to want to pick up that controller and just play it and if I don't immediately do that I will become frustrated I guess with Xbox yeah. uh, I mean I use Game Pass uh, but really only for videos, honestly. Like, I just log in, see if it works, go, okay, it works, and then I turn it off. Yeah. Um, Noble Roos says, don't condone the fact that we don't have access to many games that were in Virtual Console, but gotta be honest, once Game Boy and Game Boy Advance titles are announced in the service, it's gonna feel like, it's gonna feel great. Yeah, I mean... yeah. I, I, I was a big fan that they had NES games right out of the jump. I was very excited to play some of those NES games. Um, yeah. And then when they announced SNES games, I was a big fan of that. I thought SNES was a better library. I, I very much enjoyed playing all, all of those games. Uh, N64, same deal. Uh, so if they, any, any console they decide they want to drop, except for Virtual yeah. Boy, I'll be excited for. But I think the point... Uh that Noble Roots was trying to make was that there are still games on the Wii U virtual console and the e and 3DS virtual console that are not on Switch Online. And for Nintendo right. to drop virtual console completely while still not transferring over or giving people the, the ability to play these games on Switch Online is a problem and it is a big deal. You're basically cutting off an entire part of gaming history just because you don't want to pay to have the servers up anymore. Yeah, and it wouldn't be such a big deal if they just put this stuff on the Switch or gave us the ability to do this on the Switch. Just, yeah. We need these games in some capacity on the Switch. And honestly, it doesn't even matter if it's just part of Nintendo Switch Online. If you just yeah. give us, you know, Pokemon Yellow, Blue, Red, or whatever, all the all, everything that was available in Virtual Console, there's zero reason why it can't be on the Switch in some capacity. Yeah. Even if it's like a part of the expansion pass, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they know they can make a good, solid chunk of change with all of this stuff. Maybe they do have something planned to 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 roll it out. I don't know. They they seem to be Maybe. more uh, uh, receptive to what audiences want lately, but uh, they're still pretty anti-consumer when it comes to their uh, their retro IPs. Oh, and, definitely. And uh, the Video Game History Foundation had something to say about that, didn't they, Will? Yes, uh, they did. Uh, they released a statement on Twitter, and it reads, While it is unfortunate that people won't be able to purchase digital 3DS or Wii U games anymore, we understand that business reality that went into this decision. What we don't understand is what path Nintendo expects its fans to take should they wish to play these games in the future. 
As a paying member of the Entertainment Software Association, uh, Nintendo actively funds lobbying that prevents even libraries from being sold. Oh, sorry, prevents e sorry, Nintendo prevents even libraries from being able to provide legal access to these games. Not providing commercial access is understandable, but preventing institutional work to preserve these titles on top of that is actively destructive to video game history. We encourage ESA members like Nintendo to rethink their position on this issue and work with existing institutions to find a solution. So I like that little line. As a paying member of the Entertainment <laughs> Software Association, Nintendo actively yeah. funds lobbying that prevents libraries from being able to provide legal access to these games. That's yes. another reason to hate the ESA. Yep. Not just because V3 and leaking my brother's information. <laughs> <laughs> so the ESA is out here trying to make sure... Well, okay. So I'm sure that... Uh, there, there's a lot. I'm sure that the ESA is just trying to combat piracy, but in doing so, you're preventing other things from happening. Like, for example, libraries from having uh, yes. a, 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 a library of libraries, historical Schools. games to, to give out. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. Like, I've taken film history classes, right, and that's pretty easy the professor goes out gets the movie he wants to show in class brings the dvd in and we watch the movie if somebody wanted to do that for video games how would they be able to do that they'd have to go track down an nes plug it in make sure it's compatible with the projector and then you know we'd have to play the students would have to play it at some point are they gonna have a library of nes games for us to play or are we gonna have to take turns with it like that's Things like that make it impossible to teach people about the history of this medium. And to be fair to Nintendo, it's not just them. Most AAA companies don't want you playing the old versions of these games. They want you pl playing the newest version of these games. People consider Madden 05 the best Madden game. But good luck finding that. EA is going to want you to play madden 22 or 23 whatever number it's up to now i think this might be why video games feel like such like a like like a like a culture like 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 it's not a very accessible hobby no. For, first of all it requires your full focus um yes and, and second of all it if you want to play any of the stuff that's like historic it's not easily accessible i mean it, yeah. it is if you want to be a criminal. <laughs> well, and you know, that's why a lot of people like the Video Game History Foundation and, you know, Video Game Archivist, that's why they condone emulation. And to some extent, they condone piracy because without that, people aren't going to be able to play games. So I, I did You'll a only tweet. only be allowed to play the latest and greatest. I did a tweet last week. Here's my tweet. I did a tweet uh, Fairly recently. that uh, that popped off, baby. Yeehaw! <laughs> it's very simple. Piracy is illegal. I think we can all agree on that. And if you don't agree, you're being weird. <laughs> Piracy <laughs> is illegal, but it is not always immoral. What is illegal is not always immoral. I, yes. I today today I walked across the street and I didn't use the crosswalk and I did it more than one time. Is that was is that immoral of me to do that? There were no cars coming. I broke the yeah. fucking law. I did an illegal, but who cares? Piracy sometimes is the only way to go. If you want to play something retro, sometimes it's all, the only option you got. And I'm not saying yeah. you should go steal a game from a company like like you know uh you shouldn't like pirate uh a game from like a from like an indie studio you shouldn't really pirate a game from that that's like recent that like just came out or anything you I, i'm over here uh condoning pirating games that aren't easily accessible anymore sometimes yeah. it's way easier to just download it oh yeah and and, and 
we own a lot of games. We own a lot of these retro consoles. It's way easier for me to play these games <laughs> to ju by just downloading them than it is to get out the console and try to hook it up to a modern TV yeah. and stuff. It so really some, is. sometimes I want to play uh, Super Mario World. Uh, nine times out of ten, I'm emulating it, even though I have it. It's in the other room. I, I, it's even plugged into the TV. I could just, I could just, I might have to change an input, maybe plug in to the Frame Meister or something. But it's way yeah. easier to just go to just Google Super Mario World ROMs, ignore all of the faulty download links, and eventually get a Super Mario World ROM. And I don't think yeah. there's anything wrong with that, especially if you own the game already. But some argue it is still illegal, even if you do own the game, because you are downloading it. You're, you're, it's software that you don't own. Yeah. You own the cartridge. I, th I think technically, in order for it to be legal to own a ROM of a game, you have to actually rip the ROM from the physical right. cartridge that you own. Which, uh, look, man. I, I have the ability I have the ability to do that on one console. Yes. <laughs> on the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. Um up until the, the, you know late last year I have a I have a lot of toys, a lot of trinkets, a lot of retro paraphernalia. I have I've had zero way of ripping games and I highly doubt, and maybe like one or two of you in the chat has a way of ripping a ROM, but 99.9% .9 of you aren't going to fucking do that. You're just going to download the game. So, yeah. So, no, it's not, it's, it's not, and that's not piracy. If you're, if you're, that's just emulation. If you're ripping the ROM, that's yeah. not piracy. Yeah. Piracy is when you download it off of a of, of a, a pirated website, you know? Yeah. So, and again, I don't think there's anything wrong with downloading something off of the internet. Nintendo thinks that no. there is, and they want to come after you. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's illegal. But I think it's totally fine if that's the only way you got I'd much rather people get their hands on some of these old retro games than... Uh, I'd, I'd much rather them do that in an illegal way than not play it at all. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. Noble Roo says we only rip tenant movies for GBA in this channel. What's the legality I, of of ripping a Blu-ray movie? I think it's the same. I bought that movie mm -hmm. with company money, so it's technically the companies and i ripped it for the company and i mm -hmm. gave it to you <laughs> so when does dune come out <laughs> i think it's out it's out on dvd yeah you want me to get it so you can do the thing i need a tr i i can't do the whole movie is the problem okay i might need to just do the trailer which i guess i could just download off of youtube but we'll we'll yeah, figure we'll figure this out if i do the movie yeah. It's going to be a lot of cartridges because <laughs> I want to do it on a Game Boy Color. Right. Right. Um, I mean, anyway. technically, I could have done it back when it came out on HBO Max because it was just available on Pirate Bay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we here at the Wolf Den follow the rules. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they put Bowser in jail for it. Yeah, so... That guy, oh, yeah. Gary Bowser, uh, he was the guy who, um, he had a website that had a bunch of, uh, uh, so I don't really, we, we talked about this on the show and it was a little confusing. At first, I was upset about it because I was like, this fucked up that they're going after this guy so hard. Um, I, I, I think he... Oh, that's what it was. Okay. At first, I thought he's, he had ROMs on his website, which ended up not being mm. true. There weren't ROMs on the website. Then it turned out he just had homebrews. Like, like you can download uh, you can download uh, 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 stuff well, to hack was, your Switch or whatever. Yeah, he was selling uh, mod that's, chips and... So wait, oh, you're, going, you're, getting ahead, you're getting ahead of it. 
Sorry. He he had he he had homebrews to to hack your switch, which is totally fine. Like you own your switch, you could do whatever you want with it. And I and then I went back on it. I was like, oh no, he's fine. He, he just had homebrews. There's nothing wrong with that. Then he was selling the homebrews, which is where you yeah have a big problem. But I don't know if it's a three million dollar problem. Anyway, what what were you, what was he selling exactly? Uh, mod chips and jailbreaking software for a variety of Nintendo consoles. So, he, it's I I could see why they would want to shut that down. I don't I throwing him in jail for however they, a long time and and then also finding years, him a lot of money. Three years and fourteen point five million dollars. That's completely asinine. Yeah, unless he made fourteen million dollars. <laughs> I possible. doubt it. I <laughs> doubt there's any money in this. Because you own your Switch, you should be able to do whatever the hell you want with it. Except, apparently, in Japan, Nintendo got around that whole thing. Like, like here in the States, we have people uh, fighting for right to repair and stuff. Right. And that's uh, not going great, but... It, it, we... we won a little bit. I think John Deere, the we, people who were who started the whole uh who who made us all start to fight for right for repair. I think they yeah. they ended up getting fucked, which is good, which is a good thing. Well, yeah, John Deere did, but like big tech still hasn't. Like Apple is like it's once Apple is taking like one step forward but always like three steps back, you know. Yeah, Apple is now allowing you to uh, repair your own screen. They have, like, kits now to repair your iPhone screen. Right. Well, not to get too into it and get completely off topic, but they instituted something like that for independent repair shops. So, right. like, you can take your iPhone to, like, an indie repair shop. You don't have to take it to uh, an Apple store to do it. But the program that you had to enter into was so restrictive and, like, put you behind so much red tape that it was almost not worth it for a lot of stores to be part of that program. It was just, you know, cheaper for them to bypass it completely and do like black market screen repairs, basically. Interesting. Yeah. So, and people think that Apple's, you know, you can repair your screen yourself program is going to be very similar. Yeah. So that's not good. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Apple's historically been very bad with that with that stuff. So, so them yeah. them even acknowledging it, I consider that a win. Um, but yeah. obviously, there's a lot more work work to be done here. But what I was saying was, in Japan, apparently, Nintendo is trying to make it so that uh, uh, basically, you owning a Switch that's still Nintendo's property. You're just renting, yeah. it. which is what a lot of tech companies are trying to do. Uh, uh, here in the states, but uh, yeah. I don't think they actually have uh, been able to go forward with it. Um, so I don't know. Nintendo being a Japanese company, uh, they might be able to get away with more stuff than that. Uh, anyway, what were we talking about? Uh, the eShops, the Wii U and 3DS eShops. Oh, yeah, wouldn't that be great? Console. Wouldn't that yeah. be great if we got more games? That'd be cool. Listen, I don't want to be ungrateful. I think we got a lot of good stuff on the Switch, and, and uh, even if we got virtual console games, I don't know how much I'd be buying them. But yeah, I, I, think... I, would love, I would love some... I would pay good money for some of the better stuff, like Perfect Dark or whatever. Yeah, I think a lot of this would have been alleviated if Nintendo had like a unified account system like xbox has or playstation mm. has because you know games i bought on the 360 are in my xbox one library because it's all the yeah. same account the purchases transfer over you know i've had i've had an iphone for like you know god knows how long and all of my purchases just transfer over from one phone to the next it's really that simple you know companies have been doing that for 20 years by this point and I think the fact that Nintendo has been so slow to that just makes it that much worse. Because if you has... transfer over your purchases from Wii U to Switch, this would not be a problem. That's true. That that you're right. That it, it took us that long to get here. That's that hits the nail right on the head. <laughs> Nintendo yeah. has horrible um, uh, 
user experience issues and they've always had horrible user experience issues they're always yeah. so far behind everybody else in that regard uh xbox is like unfortunately <laughs> is leading the way it's not even like it's good but it's only really good because everybody else sucks so bad at it um yeah yeah like i like i've said many times uh my freaking uh sonic adventure 2 battle that i downloaded on xbox 360 with its save file and everything has been on every single one of my xbox consoles um yeah. so there's no reason why uh my digital purchases from my freaking wii shouldn't be available i i keep buying the same fucking game from nintendo but they know that they know that we're going to keep buying the same game over over and over yeah. again i bought the original super mario brothers what like 15 times like i have that yeah. in like every way they could do it they even put it on a fucking little game and watch and yeah. sold it for 50 bucks and yeah. i bought it like an idiot and that's not the best way to play the game no it's the, uh, maybe the worst one maybe of the worst one of the worst yeah one of the worst what uh, uh, one of the uh worst official ways probably yeah um so yeah i think that would solve a lot more issues is just making a more unified account system also whenever I, even, they don't even have it right on the switch if i buy a switch game i can't play it like everywhere it's like it fucking sucks yeah. and my save yeah. file it, it's not always gonna be it's they, they can't no, even it's, figure it out on their most modern console yeah Anyway, which makes me scared that like whatever the switch Two is the successor to the switch is like transferring your stuff over. If you're going to be allowed to do that is going to be a disaster. Yeah, uh, it shouldn't be. That's what they need to fix. Uh, yeah. Maybe even more so than than getting a virtual console. Uh, let us just care. Well, I mean, if they let us carry our games over, then that would be just getting a virtual console. And then that's yeah. that's backwards compatibility, too. That's another yeah. issue. Uh, I guess PlayStation isn't that great at that either. No, they used to be, but then they decided, no, we're not going to do that anymore. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, you know about this, right? The people, uh, Lieutenant in the chat, he's bringing this up. The the yeah, Apple announces self service yeah. repair. Yeah, because that's what yeah, I was so talking about. Yeah, we were talking about that before, how Apple is going to uh, basically give you the tools and the components you need to repair, do certain repairs on your devices, like a screen repair on your iPhone, battery replacement on your iPhone, and whatnot. What I was talking about was they had a similar program set up for independent repair shops, oh, but it was right, very yeah. restrictive. Like, independent repair shops couldn't do certain things, and they had to abide by certain rules Apple put forth. To the point where for a lot of them, it was just easier to not be a part of the program and do, and do the repairs, you know, for lack of a better term, black market style. What I was trying to say was a lot of people who are like are big into rights repair are afraid that the self-service repair that Apple is doing is going to be similarly restrictive in certain aspects. Right. Like you... They're, you, you not, it's going to be prohibitively expensive. It's going to not give you everything you need. It's going to do this, 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 and this. Yeah, no, you you conveyed that well before. I I I was. Yeah. That's I was. Yeah, no, we 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 touched on that already. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, we got notifications here. We're in the chat. We got cool Chris. Thanks for the prime. We got Treble. Thanks for gifting a sub to Eric. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and Lieutenant. Thanks for the hundred bits. Um. All right. There's more news. Believe it or not, things happened this yes. week. Yeah, not a lot. Not a lot of exciting things, but things nonetheless. <laughs> uh, like for example, uh, we got uh, EA. It's not, they don't, listen, Battlefield 2042 might not have done too good, but it's not their fault. It's not the <laughs> fact that the game was bad and had a lot of yeah. bugs. It's, no. It's everybody else's fault. <laughs> in, a, in a company town hall meeting with employees, EA acknowledged the disappointing launch of Battlefield 2042 and discussed plans to improve the game and launch and the franchise going forward. Uh, Lori... Millie nailed it. EA's chief studios officer 
uh, said the company failed to meet the expectations of our players and also clearly missed our own expectations. Uh, as if identifying the reasons for the game's failure, she attributed the blame on the huge ambition of the project, combined with the global pandemic, which created unexpected variables in the development process. Uh, she also stated that while EA received a lot of feedback concerning bugs and unpolished areas of our uh, experience of the experience, there was also a substantial amount of positive feedback from players. Following the game's launch and rollout of the day one patch, the game was stable and early critical reception was good. However, Battlefield was then affected by the launch of Halo Infinite, uh, as unfavorable comparisons were made between the Xbox shooter and Battlefield 2042, with Halo perceived to be a much more polished title. Uh, she acknowledged the company historically had uh, bug issues with DICE games at launch, but said the bug con the bug count for Battlefield 2042 fell into the range EA expected when compared to other launches. The company, therefore, believed the issues would be manageable. However, uh, it is believed player expectations had changed with respect to live service games, so the previous model of shipping it and patching it no longer uh, flies. Dissatisfaction among players has led to the circulation of an online petition demanding refunds, which has now reached over 200,000 signatures. So they they said that Halo Infinite was much more polished. They had a whole extra year. <laughs> right. And from everything I've seen, Halo Infinite not all that polished itself. And it was missing features. It had some buggy features. But I think for the most part, uh, people are having a much more positive experience with Halo Infinite than they are with Battlefield 2042. I, I want to I give... Microsoft a lot of credit like I, I think Halo Infinite is pretty awesome uh, and, and yeah. it, I think it was definitely worth it pushing it back a little bit um, but yeah it is missing features and there's like hacking online and stuff it is it is really weird yeah um, but it is a re it's a pretty phenomenal game especially if you're a big Halo fan so uh, yeah. yeah I, I, I want to give them credit for that EA they don't get any credit they keep no. releasing the same Especially fucking game in the same fucking engine, and uh, they did the same thing. They, it's their fault that they're releasing these games in the same window as these other big AAA games. I think also too, like Battlefield has historically had problems at launch on consoles. Like Battlefield Four, famously, did not work. At launch, you could not yes. play the multiplayer. Yeah, at you could. I remember it was it was the, it was a PS4 launch title. It was the first game that I got mm -hmm. on the PS4, uh, or yeah. or did it come out like a week after or something? I don't remember. Uh, it, but it, it was, was within the launch window. It was one yeah. of the first games I got. I remember Rezo Gun was the first game I got. But then I got Battlefield 4, and that game for a whole fucking week you could not play online. Yeah. It would drop every so, five seconds. Was, and and that, that, at, at that time, that was expected from AAA games. It was expected for you to get the game at launch and then not be able to play it online because it was going to suck that bad. Well, I think what what sucked more, too, was that Battlefield 4 reviewed very well because yeah. they had all the reviewers go a month early to review the game at EA's campus. So it was in right. the perfect conditions, not real-world conditions. So that just made things much worse. And then cut to, you know, a few years later with Battlefield Five, that was also a bad game at launch. We played <laughs> that game, and from what I can understand, they never really fixed it. And now they took a lot of time off from Battlefield. And they finally came back with Battlefield 2042, an online-only game like Battlefield should always be, and it still isn't up to the standards that it should be. You know? Yeah, they they uh. They had all the they had all these tries to make it good and make it better, and they keep shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, um, and and we we've heard other stories of them trying to bring people in to make Battlefield a better franchise. Um, I think they brought they brought yeah. back the Apex guy, didn't they? They brought over yeah they brought over um, Vince Zampella from Respawn right uh, over to. He's not over to dice, but now he's overseeing all the battlefield property at EA, which they also fucked because uh, we brought this up on the show before too. The, the Titanfall two incredible game that released yeah. in between two other major AAA games, uh, 
Yes. And that actually killed Titanfall. Um, I don't think Battlefield was killed by Halo. And what else did they say? Any other games? They didn't say any other games. They said Halo, uh, the pandemic, and uh, just they, they basically admit to releasing a buggy game. They said it wasn't as buggy as we thought it was. Oh my god. Um yeah, I think Titanfall 2 uh they, they got if, if they're going to have a problem with releasing games up against other big AAA games, like you're not competing with Halo. That game yeah. it was so highly anticipated and they had so much riding on that game. Um are you releasing Battlefield? Uh, I mean, <laughs> especially like like a half-baked Battlefield game. Um I should I should know before anyone brings it up either in the chat or in the the YouTube comments, EA has tried to walk back blaming Halo of EA Communications VP John uh, Resenberg said, these stories are not accurately capturing the discussion in the context, which was an in-depth and very humble internal conversation about the recent Battlefield launch. It was about key learnings and actions we were taking, not blaming external factors. I understand blame, like putting blame on the pandemic a lot of game companies were affected by it. A lot of games suffered because of the transition to work from home. Um, but, I mean, I feel like it was pretty clear. You were saying people would much rather play Halo than your own game. Yeah, and I mean, I, I'm I'm used to people blaming the pandemic by now, and that's a pretty valid yeah. excuse, you know. A, yeah. a lot of a lot of it really screwed up a lot of things. Also, the, the uh, supply chain issues and all of that like like yes. of, of course there's going to be issues that that i think is pretty valid but um delay the fucking game <laughs> make sure it's yeah. good before it comes out there were there was a litany of reasons why that game should have been delayed and they didn't um yeah for whatever reason i mean i guess they have like uh like like certain uh, uh promotional windows they need to re release the game in they have yeah. uh uh things riding on it for investors sake and stuff so like yeah, i no, kind of i i understand but reasons. like but the human element's more important if the game sucks uh the numbers aren't going to be there for your for your uh for your little shareholders so yeah it, it's not going to work out good for you so yeah i didn't get battlefield 2042 because i saw i saw the horrible stuff about it and i'm not even that big of a battlefield fan like i played three and four and i liked it i used to i played battlefields the old the real old one like the like the the, uh, the original 20, no 20 something 2142 um, yeah 2142 yeah that was one. yeah yeah and i i didn't yeah. really like that too much yeah i mean I used, to, I used to play joint ops which was like a knockoff of battlefield yeah. and i liked that a lot <laughs> Yeah, I I did not care for Battlefield three and four at all. Uh, I liked it a little bit. I, I like three a little bit, but one, I'd rather Call of Duty. Battlefield one was cool because it was different. Mm -hmm. It was like when the modern warfare craze was like starting to die down, and Battlefield was like, you know what, fuck it, let's do World War one, and that was kind of cool. Just it was different at the time. But like, I've, like Call of Duty for all of its problems is a better game. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really just is. Especially, especially in terms of single player, it is a much better experience. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd much rather play. I, even back then, I would much rather play Call of Duty. It just, you know what? I got, I got a little burnt out on Call of Duty, so I had to get something else. Right. So, so I got yeah, Battlefield get, Three. Get, get the game. Get the game that was originally something completely different until EA decided, no, this is going to be our Call of Duty killer. Make it Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. what they did it is anyway hey lieutenant you didn't have to do that thanks for the subscription i appreciate it <laughs> uh hey there's a new halo tv show that we've talked about here and yeah <laughs> they're doing will's favorite thing they're doing the <laughs> thing that will loves when shows do this yeah and i'm not even a big halo guy uh, the upcoming Halo TV show will reveal Master Chief's face for the first time in history. So cool. Um, talking, talking to IGN's uh, Ryan McCaffrey, Halo executive producer and 343 Industries studio head of transmedia, Kiki Wolfkill, that is a, that is a good name, uh, <laughs> said that showing that awesome. Chief's face was, was important for the story of the show will tell. Uh, 
I think we set out to tell a character story and a personal story, she explained. And once we really got into what that story was, it became clear that you really need to see the person in the armor and under the helmet. You will see his face, she confirmed. For Ugh. some people, it's been a moment 20 years in the making. And for other people, it is something that feels very hard to imagine. We absolutely respect both sides of that fence. Uh, those who Do really want know? to see Chiefs <laughs> And those who really don't. But for the nature of this story, it felt really important to connect with Master Chief in a different way. And that meant showing his face. Uh, Halo will premiere on March 24th, 2022 on Paramount Plus in the United States. It, is it? Does that seem lazy? Is that ra lazy writing? Like, like, like what? Not, not maybe not writing, but like, I guess like they just, these people think that it's necessary for you to connect to the character, I guess, for, to to see their face. Yeah, this is a this is a longstanding. I think the most famous example of this is like maybe not the most famous example, but like so Judge Dredd. Yeah. He is a character who famously never shows his face in in the comics. So the whole point is that you don't see his face. He's supposed to represent the facelessness of uh corrupt absolute law and in the sylvester stallone movie judge dread within 10 minutes face oh, the helmet's off it's stallone everybody um, <laughs> and that like and honestly like fr from that point on the movie is legitimately unwatchable <laughs> like i don't know if that has anything to do with it but like i always mark that as the point where the movie's unwatchable but anyway yeah it's this idea that if you can't see the actor's face then you can't connect with the character emotionally. That's why you always see Robert Downey Jr.'s face uh, when he's Iron Man, even though yeah. he's wearing a full body. I think that's. that's why, I think that's yeah. was kind of a really good solution for Iron Man. Was was the the Iron Man head camera? I think that's actually really cool. Yeah, that works. I guess a better example will be every Spider Man movie. He's got to take off his mask. Yeah, that that is stupid. Minutes. That is dumb. I, that, that gets so fucking frustrating. Like, we get it. He's Spider. This is why. Say what you will about the Dark Knight movies, but like the last twenty minutes of the Dark Knight, Christian, you don't see Christian Bale's face. He wears the mask for right. the entire climax of the movie. Say say what you will about the Mandalorian. Oh. I think they did a good job. With, with oh that. yeah, no. The man he, he wears the mask it. for ninety percent of it, and then they make a whole yeah. thing about him taking off the mask. Like the whole thing yes. about the Mandalorian is he's not taking off that fucking mask. Yeah, and there's consequences for him taking off the mask. Yeah, like they make a big deal about it. You know, so, as opposed to the, the book of Boba Fett, where the whole reason we like him is because he, he wears the mask, and he just doesn't wear the mask. He never wears it. He never wears it. In that he, he puts it on it. to like walk for like ten feet, and then he takes it off. Yeah, it's uh, it's just, it's well, Halo is a weird thing because Master Chief sits right in the middle of of the line between silent protagonist and a protagonist who talks. The point of a silent protagonist is that your you the player are supposed to fully embody the character, like a character like Gordon Freeman or a. Uh, Claude from GTA 3, they don't talk because you're supposed to project your own personality onto the character. Other characters like, you know, Duke Nukem or uh, the characters from GTA 5 or whatnot, characters with dialogue who you play as, you're supposed to specifically feel like that character, not project your emotions onto the character. Those characters or emotions are supposed to be projected back onto you. Master Chief is weird because... He has dialogue, but he he, ha he says like maybe ten words a game, <laughs> and it's yeah. always in like a flat monotone. So like he has a character, I guess, but you fill in the blanks mostly. So so I haven't really played much Halo. Uh, I played like two, I think, like way back in yeah. the day, um, and ODST, which obviously Master Chief <laughs> wasn't in that, right? Um. But I played a little bit of Infinite, and I could not get a vibe in the beginning of like what Master Chief was like because he barely talks. He's talking to one guy, and he's just an asshole to that guy. But like, yeah, you know, he's just like a 
He's just getting the job done, but he, yeah, he barely says a word to him, and he just, he's, and you just, just get right into, you just get right into the action, and uh, yeah. so there was, there was like no like build up or anything. You just, you just go. Um, yeah, but the most Halo I've ever played is Halo One, and mm -hmm. every time he opens his mouth, it's jarring because I just spent five hours hearing nothing but Cortana talk, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, this guy starts saying words I, and like, I think it should be though because like he's supposed to be like this big mysterious thing and then when yeah. he talks you better fucking listen because he's 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 a big powerful man he's the master chief yeah so yeah a character where it, th that is his identity is the mask like him taking yeah. it off does it, it does doesn't make any sense and him doing it in a tv show that's not where we should see him first it should be in the video game. no if they're gonna yeah. do it it should be in the video game. The people who Absolutely. watch this TV show and don't play the games do not deserve to see Master Chief's face. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't. I think that's a bad sign for what this show is going to be like. I think that it's like a lazy way to try to get people to connect with the main character. Yeah. I mean, it's, maybe they have to, because I mean, aside from the Spartan armor and like some of the props, it does look like a cheap show. True. So maybe that's the only this like they had to, for the sake of like budget. They could have done some more creative things, or or maybe we would have just had that connection anyway. You know, maybe, maybe we didn't need maybe all of this. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, know. Legion. Thanks for the Prime subscription, guys. If you have Amazon Prime, where you get your you get your little you get your little uh toilet paper or whatever with two-day shipping on Amazon, you can link that to your Twitch account and you get to give us a free subscription. It supports us every single month. Uh, and it's free for you if you have Amazon Prime. Even if you're just a podcast listener, you can come over here and drop that whenever you want. It helps support us. Um, I knew this was a thing. Uh, Microsoft opened Activision acquisition talks three days after CEO harassment report. I knew yes. that was the reason for all this. <laughs> It was just when too Microsoft, convenient of the timing. It was very convenient. When Microsoft announced it would spend $68.7 billion to buy Activision Blizzard to bolster its Xbox gaming division, the news came as a surprise for many. For months, the troubled publisher had been in headlines stemming from workplace sexual harassment lawsuits filed by California's Fair Employment Agency in July. The, bre the, bad, pr the bad press, nailed it, hit a fever pitch in November on November 16th after the Wall Street Journal published a report that asserts Activision CEO Bobby Kotick had not only known about many of the uh, many of the incidents of sexual harassment that had occurred at the company, but also acted to protect those who were responsible for the abuse. Days after the article came out, Xbox chief Phil Spencer reportedly told employees he was disturbed and deeply troubled by the horrific events and actions that actually took place at Activision Blizzard and that Microsoft would reevaluate its relationship with the publisher. It's one day after that email that Spencer called Kodak to start the process that would end with Microsoft announcing plans to buy Activision Blizzard some two months later, according to a U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filing first spotted by CNBC. Starting on page 31 of the document, Microsoft devotes nearly 10 pages detailing mm -hmm. the timeline of its talks with Activision. According to the filing, Spencer told Kodak during their November 19th phone call that Microsoft was interested in discussing strategic opportunities between the two companies and asked if he had time to talk to Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella uh, the following day. That Saturday, November 20th, Nadella made it clear Microsoft hoped to purchase the publisher stating that the company was interested in exploring strategic combination with Activision Blizzard. I, I remember uh, once all this shit went down, Phil Spencer tweeted something like, uh, we're going to take action against Activision. Well, he didn't, he didn't, I don't think he tweeted. I think that, that email that he sent to the company, uh, to the company uh, was released. Oh, okay. So people, people had hurt, people knew what his opinions were. 
Yeah, and he made, it, he made it sound like they were going to retaliate against Activision for these harassment like, accusations. Yeah, like there would be like sanctions or whatnot. Like they would, you know, stop doing business with Activision or they'll like bump up their yeah. licensing fee. Like there and, would be punishment. And we were all like, yeah, bullshit. Like we'll see it when we see it. Like where you're not going to yeah. just stop working with Activision. Yeah, right, dude. And that's what you, yeah. we were all like calling bullshit. We were like, uh, you could probably find it on this podcast. I was like, d d either stop working with them or or you support them. Like, like this is bullshit. You're just talking out your ass until we see some action. And the action was, here's $69 b <laughs> billion. Dollars, go <Yeah>. away. <laughs> it turns out the quick pace at which the talks moved was mainly due to all the other companies interested in buying up Activision Blizzard after oh its God. stock dived in November. At least four other companies contacted the publisher about possible acquisitions, None of them are named in the SEC filing. However, one notably wanted just Blizzard. Activision didn't move forward mm -hmm. with that option because the company's board of directors deemed the sale would have been too difficult to pull off. That makes a lot of sense. Maybe that was yes. Riot. Maybe Riot was like, probably, yeah. Let's take our freaking competitor out. Let's just, yeah, let's we just want... take them. I don't think it would have been difficult. You know, AT&T bought Time Warner and now they're selling Time Warner to Discovery. <laughs> so it's not that hard to do. Um, the document also detailed the terms of the purchase. If the deal doesn't go through due to antitrust complications, Microsoft has agreed to pay Activision Blizzard a termination th fee of up to $3 billion. Oh. A few years ago, that's pos that po a few years ago, that's a possibility Microsoft probably wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have had to worry about too much. But 2022 finds the company in a very different regulatory environment, and it's all this legal jargon, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I don't think uh, this is very surprising, but it's it's good confirmation that uh, that I mean, it's a pretty, you know, pretty much solidifies the reasoning for why they did this in the first place. I, I, it wasn't in that article, but I saw something similar uh, in a different article that said, for comparison, the... Sony's acquisition of Bungie took months, many, many months of like hammering out details, trying to find a, a good deal uh, for both companies, trying to figure out what Bungie's position in Sony would be. Like they had months of like back and forths and conversations before the announcement, like just a few weeks ago. Whereas Microsoft was like, hey, we want to buy you. How are we going to make this work? And Activision's like, Okay. How do you think that phone call went? You think uh, Bobby Kotick was like, Phil, you gotta help me. I'm in deep shit. <laughs> I, d I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if like Phil laid down law and be like, listen, I am your only hope right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can get you out of this, but you have to give it, you have to give me the reins, basically. I need everything. Yeah. I'm and I have the head of Microsoft it like agrees with me yeah uh i so i i started screwing back in this just joy con shell uh mm -hmm. i forgot where all of the screws go so i have to <laughs> to pull up a freaking uh uh backwards tutorial now oh man uh but it's the i, I got the back all oh, the front on actually so it's all good shouldn't be too hard uh, hey, we got more notifications. Uh, I, get, I think people primed. We got average FPS. Thank you for the prime. And we got Grandmaster God Gaming. Thank you very much for the four months. I appreciate that. Um, more news. Yes. Capcom did some things. So last so week we had people telling us there's a countdown over at Capcom. And we were like, who cares? It's five days away. What are we going to yeah. talk about? It's a countdown. It could be anything. Turns out, it's a trailer for Street Fighter VI, the next major entry in the iconic franchise celebrating its 35th anniversary this year. Wow. Uh, the trailer doesn't show off any actual gameplay, but it suggests that Street Fighter VI will have a more realistic art style than previous games in the series, at least as realistic as you can expect while maintaining Ryu's formidable pro proportions. Capcom says more information on the game will be coming this summer. Uh, Capcom will hope is hoping that 
Street Fighter 6 has a better launch than its predecessor. Street Fighter 5 looked and played great when it came out on PS4 and PC back in 2016, but it suffered from a dearth of content as well as bugs and server issues. The game ultimately sold more than 6 million copies after subsequent revisions, Arcade Edition and Championship Edition were met with a better reception. Uh, Capcom also announced a new compilation of 10 fighting games for the PS4, Xbox, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Capcom Fighting Game Capcom Fighting Collection will be out on June 24th and include the following titles. Darkstalkers, The Night Warriors, Night Warriors, Darkstalkers Revenge, Vampire Hunter 2, Darkstalkers Revenge, Vampire Savior, The Lord of Vampire, Vampire Slayer 2, The Lord of Vampire, Hyper Street Fighter 2, the, the Anniversary Edition, Red Earth, Super Gem Fighter, Mini Mix, Pocket Fighter, Cyberbots, Full Metal Madness, and Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. Fucking names, man. That is a lot. Yeah. So I love the art in all of these games. It's, they're all beautiful games. Yes. Uh, never play any of these fucking games. <laughs> uh, I think I've played Darkstalkers once. Mm-hmm. That's about it. Because I remember being very weird. And a lot of a lot of these games on the fighting collection are games that have never been in America before. Like it's right. all the Darkstalkers games, which is cool. I um, I mean I'm, I think it's great that they're that they're moving those over. They're, these these games have uh, uh a lot of fans. Um yeah. I'm more of a like I like I was big I like Marvel versus Capcom, which is like a taste of of this these types of games. Yeah. Um Anyway, Street Fighter though, that's a pretty big deal. Uh yes. Uh, it looks like there's a new character who yeah, looks I like Leffen. <laughs> <laughs> um he looks like a UFC guy. Yeah. He's got um, like a UFC boxing glove and it says USA on it. And I think that's supposed yeah. to be like that's supposed to be like UFC. Yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely like I haven't played a Street Fighter game since like Street Fighter four, and even mm-hmm. that was for like a very little bit. Um, so I, I don't know any of the new characters. I'm not up on the lore, if you will, because it's got a bonkers lore. Um, but this does look like it's taking place like years in the future because Ryu's got like, you know, his old haggard beard on. Mm-hmm. So it's probably going to like be about the next generation of Street Fighters. Um, they didn't really announce anything about Street Fighter 6 other than Street Fighter 6 exists. Yeah, it was just Street this Fighter short 5. teaser. Street Fighter V was a PS4 console exclusive, mostly mm-hmm. because Sony partially funded it. So I'm curious to see if Sony has a hand in this game or if Capcom is finally going to make Street Fighter a multi-platform release again. So it, it it's there is a, a note on that. Um, so... PlayStation, I don't think retweeted uh, the trailer, but mm-hmm. they did retweet the trailer for the uh, fighting collection. Okay. And the fighting collection, notably, is on Xbox, but not on Switch. No, it is. Street... You said it is? Yeah. Yeah, uh, not according to the trailer. Well, the trailer, they probably. Oh no, it's this switch. Yeah. What was Spawn Wave talking about? Spawn Wave tweeted something, I think. So uh, Street Fighter Six, we don't know what it's on. Oh, that was Soul Hackers. I'm I am all fucked up. Soul Hackers. Oh, yeah, that was a big deal. Like that was trending for like a week. Soul Hackers not coming to Switch. Right. Which okay. <laughs> Wait, we saw uh, this. Oh, we saw this last week, I think. Did we not? No. I remember seeing no. this. What? Soul Hackers? No, this stupid uh, 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 the fighting game collection. No, this just got announced with Street Fighter Six. I week. don't know. I'm having a stroke. Probably. So the, so the fighting collection is on Switch? Yes. Okay, but we don't know what Street Fighter Six is for. Correct. PlayStation did not retweet it. I'm double checking now because I seem to be wrong frequently. 
PlayStation did tweet a whole bunch. I'll tell you what, though. There it is. The fighting game collection. Uh, and no Street Fighter 6. Yeah. So that leads me to believe it might that there might be some bad blood there. It might be. I think if, I, it's probably multi-platform. I don't think they'd go with an exclusivity deal. Yeah, I feel like at this point, like there's no benefit to console exclusivity for a game like Street Fighter. Right. You know, when they do tournaments and stuff, they'll probably, you know, tell people to play it on one console or another. But in terms of like general audience, it makes no sense to limit it to one system. Also, there's an article here that says the logo is ripped off. Uh, I was going to yeah. say, I was going to say uh, it. Oh, wait, did I delete it? It looks like the UFC logo. Or one the of Street the UFC logo. logo. Yeah. Uh, well, apparently, it bears a striking resemblance to a logo design available through the Adobe Stock Image Store. Available what? with an extended license for $80 and created by a user called X Cooley. Wow. Well, I mean, it's, the, it's a template. So as long the as design. they own it... Yeah, the design is available as an Adobe Illustrator file, meaning alterations could presumably have been easily made uh, to the original file. Uh, and the Adobe stock license do allow for modifications in commercial use. The design appears to have been used publicly before, as Twitter user 100GB points out, uh, and different modif modified versions seemingly uh, used as a logo for an SF Connexion sci uh, science fiction convention in France. Uh, speaking with IGN, X Schooley confirmed that they did create the Adobe stock image and revealed that they were looking to sell exclusive rights for the image to Capcom, removing it from sale to other parties. We've contacted Capcom for comments on similarities between the design and X Schooley's offer for sale. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So, so it's not like they ripped it off. It, it's, it was a stock image. They just didn't well, do they much didn't, work to it. Right. They didn't say whether or not they used that image or not i mean they must have yeah they, i mean it's, it's, it's too, way too similar too, yeah what i was saying was this looks like the ufc logo look at the freaking uh look at this similarity there i mean that's an octagon yeah but still it's like the same uh, it's, it's it's very similar yeah i think that's what they're it going is, for with 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 the, probably, this version of of street fighter it is noticeably different from the street fighter logos of the past Yes, which are normally like, uh, it's like, yeah, it's a big, uh, yellow and orange street fighter and Roman numeral numbers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. This is not a Roman numeral number. Yeah. And normally like, uh, yeah, like, like a big, uh, like hand drawn type, uh, type, type stuff. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is very hard and, and, uh, and, yeah. uh, and a slabby. Yeah. Which is, you know. That might indicate a new direction for the series, but like, I don't really know. Street Fighter is the kind of game that like needs a new direction. Like it's Street True. Fighter. We mm -hmm. all know what what to expect from it. Yeah, they kind of like perfected it already. Now we're just kind of regressing. <laughs> they perfected it back in like 1992. Right. Anyway, hey, we got a new look at PlayStation VR 2, and it doesn't look good. I don't like it. I mean, it, that's just the helmet. <laughs> yeah, the there big, it is. The but like, is... it's it's the PlayStation VR has like they always have this like forehead thing, and I don't I don't like it. Yeah, uh, you'll notice the PSVR two headset it has a similar shape as the PSVR Sense controller, taking on a matching orb look. The circular orb shape represents the three hundred sixty degree view that the players feel when they enter the virtual reality world. So this shape captures it nicely. Uh, Look at how big it is on the back too. Yeah. It's, it's huge. The, this thing is huge. <laughs> the design of the PSVR 2 headset also inspired by the look of the PS5 a family of products. When our design team created the PSV the PS5 console, they also had the next generation VR headset in mind. So you'll notice some similarities in the look and feel. The PS5 console has flat edges as it as it is meant to be displayed on a flat surface. 
While there are more emphasis on adding roundness to the design of PSVR 2 headsets since it's meant to have constant human contact, similar to the round edges of the DualSense controller and the Pulse 3D headset. I, I, I mean, I just... Like, I already... Like, I liked the original PlayStation VR because it was the easiest way to get into, into VR. Yeah. Uh, but, like... After using other VR headsets and then getting the Quest, which was you just pop it on your head and it just works. Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine getting something much significantly bigger and has to be tethered. I'm not about that. I, I hate that. Yeah. And the and the freaking controllers are huge. I I th- there better be some freaking awesome games and some crazy graphics on this thing because well they do I, say I, I don't like this at all. It's a slimmer design with a rate with a slight weight reduction, even with all the new added features like a built-in motor for headset feedback. And they added uh, cam- outward-facing cameras, so you don't need a PlayStation camera in addition to the headset. That's good. Uh, and yeah, there's no like giant brick anymore, right? It just plugs right into the. Into I the, believe so. Yeah, which is also great. Um, mm-hmm. But again, I mean, the Quest is it like it's so much easier. Yeah, the Quest headsets require a counterweight for me to use them comfortably. A lot of people, when I made my video on the Oculus Quest Two, which was sponsored, full disclosure, um, a lot of people were like, "This is in, this is a, uh, uh, what do you call it?" Uh, uh, they said it was fucked up of me to not talk about how you need the the different strap, which is not right. true. I don't, I still don't have it. I use the Oculus Quest Two, and it's friggin' great. It's I'm totally comfortable wearing it as is right out of the box um but other people seem to think that you need some sort of like other strap or a counterweight or something but uh i don't think you need it um and and i don't think playstation's justified in this design (laughs) because of that i mean i i think this is obscene this is huge (laughs) uh anyway I don't know. I, I, there better be some crazy games, and it better be the most immersive experience of my life, uh, because I think this is not innovative at all. <laughs> Obviously, I have a lot to say about this. Um. Anyway. Oh, Zen. Hi. Oh, you? Yeah, you froze I'm back for a second. You're, yeah. you're here now. Uh, right. While you're uh, here, Will, why don't yes. we talk about Guardians of the Galaxy? Because I haven't played it. Okay. Uh, neither have I. I haven't played it yet. Oh, I thought you did. No. Uh, I beat. I just beat Spider-Man Miles Morales. So I'm gonna. This will be my next game if I ever get. Two How was to Spider-Man Miles Morales? It was very good. Um, it is a hundred percent an expansion pack to Spider-Man, the the Marvel's Insomniac Sony's Dave Dicko Spider-Man, but it is a <laughs> it is an excellent. Excellent expansion pack. It's a great game. Really fun. It it does enough to distinguish itself from the base game while still not losing what made the base game great. Uh, so yeah, go and check it out if you haven't already. Guardians of the Galaxy is a different story, though. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently did not meet Square Enix's high expectations. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy was quite the unexpected hit for many in 2021. Uh, featuring a single-player adventure that focused heavily on narrative features and the story of Peter Quill becoming the leader of the popular spacefaring group. The game received critical praise following its release. It even went on to win the Best Narrative Award at the 2021 Game Awards. For many, the game was a dark horse of 2021, as few expected it uh, to be as well-received as it was. Following the controversial and criticized launch of Marvel's Avengers, few were expecting... Uh, Midas Montre- Eidos Montreal and Square Enix to be able to completely flip the script in the following year. Uh, the following year released a truly successful title. In the months following its release, Guardians of the Galaxy was seen as a success with it holding an overwhelmingly positive amount of reviews on Steam. However, it seemed that even Square Enix was not expecting the game to do as well as it did and that despite its critical play- praise, Guardians of the Galaxy may have failed elsewhere. The page is still loading for me. Why is the page still loading? <laughs> Give me the friggin- article. Oh, it's Game Rant. Usually they're fine. Yeah. Here we go. According to a... Uh, I lost it. 
According to a recent quarterly earnings report, Guardians of the Galaxy publisher Square Enix claimed that the game underperformed in its launch sales. The company wrote in its report that the game's sales on launch undershot our initial expectations. However, sales have grown since November 2021, likely caused by people picking up on all the critical praise the game was getting. Uh, Square Enix was expecting this growth in sales to continue as 2022 marches on. It's unsurprising that Guardians of the Galaxy is selling well even now, as Marvel games have proven that they have a certain longevity when it comes to new players joining the game. Uh, where single-player titles are concerned, especially games like Spider-Man, still seeing strong communities online with players enjoying the 2018 game. After the critical panning of Marvel's Avengers, Square Enix lost a significant amount of money, so it is likely hoping for strong Guardians of the Galaxy sales to make up for that. I'm honestly surprised it did that good. I mean, I, I didn't I mean, think it was going to do very good at all. I mean, yeah, me neither. I think I think a lot of us, uh, probably the reason why I didn't do so well at launch was because a lot of us still had the stink of the Avengers game that they that Square yes. Enix made. And, yes. Yeah. And I mean, they tried everything to tell us this was going to be different. It's single player only. You only play as one character. It's got a strong narrative focus. It, your choices matter. You know, they tried, and I guess people didn't really believe them until the game came out. And pe- they were seeing, you know, good word of mouth, probably watching some live streams or Let's Plays or whatnot of the game, and thought, this might be worth checking out. And I think it helped that, like, the game was on sale, like, almost immediately after launch. <laughs> like, it was, like, half off during Black Friday and well beyond that. I thought that was a sign of it not doing good, but you're saying Square Enix said that uh, it didn't do good in their eyes. But didn't, didn't they say Tomb that. Raider no. didn't do good, even though it sold that's, like that's an insane what I was amount? Like, Gar- Square Enix has a history of, especially for like their Western games, like their quote unquote IDOS games, they have a history of saying like these games are underperforming and like are technically failures. Do they just uh, the not like their Western games? <laughs> I don't know. The 2013 Tomb Raider, like you were saying, Square Enix said that game was a financial failure, even though it was the best-selling game in the entire series, even to this day. Um, Hitman, they... uh, Hitman Absolution, they said, was an absolute... No. No. Hitman... There's too many Hitman games. (laughs) The most recent reboot of Hitman from, like, 2017 or whatever, they said that was... That underperformed, and that was a failure. And yet Hitman 3 that just came out recouped its entire budget in its first week of sales. My God. So clearly there is a disconnect between uh, what Square Enix wants these games to do versus the reality of the situation. Maybe they do good here and they don't do good in Japan. I think they just set their numbers way too high. Right. You know, I mean, these, I they, these days, sometimes games will just hit and they'll sell like an insane amount. And maybe they're just hoping. I mean, if you just look at the numbers, you can assume like, oh, the next one should do this good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's not well, how it works. I don't know. I think they just expect everything to do like Call of Duty numbers every right. year. Right. When like not every game is going to do that. I don't even think the Final Fantasy games do that. But they've they've never said like, oh, Final Fantasy fifteen is a failure. Wait a second, well, did you say Call of Duty? I sure did, Bob. Next year's Call of Duty, the twenty twenty three one, there is goodbye. It's delayed. We'll see you in twenty twenty four. Uh f- all right, so there's an update to the story. I'll read the original story, then I'll go back and read the update because IGN likes to put the updates on the top. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, typical annual Call of Duty release planned for 2023 has been reportedly been delayed to 2024. Oh, According no, to Bloomberg, sources familiar with the situation, executives in charge of the franchise have made the decision early after a recent entry in the series failed to meet expectations, leading them to believe that Call of Duty's current annual cadence of releases was too rapid. Better late than never. The decision was reportedly unrelated to the recent Microsoft purchase of the publisher, and the 2022 oh. Call of Duty release is still on track. The recent entry is most likely Call of Duty Vanguard, which faced release competition from Battlefield 2042 this past holiday season, as well as the free to play Call of Duty Warzone. A previous report noted that Vanguard's sales had also been suffering due to players feeling fatigued at Call of Duty's constant release cadence 
making them less interested in buying a new release every year. Sure. The annual Call of Duty release has traditionally been one of gaming's biggest money makers, typically topping sales charts in the U.S. at launch and remaining in the top 10 year round. With a massive sales gap now looming, Activision is reportedly working on other projects to fill in the gap, such as an ongoing content for 2022's Call of Duty release and separate new free-to-play game, uh, free-to-play online game that has yet to be announced. So yeah, this year uh, is still going to be uh, rumored to be uh, Modern Warfare 2. Yes. So a sequel to Modern Warfare. And it's going to have its own Vanguard or, or its own uh, uh, war zone, like, yeah. like standalone, like like a brand new war zone uh, type situation. Yeah. Uh, which is great. So that'll still come out this year this anyway. Year. Yeah. And uh, then uh, uh, it, so we're going to have to wait another two years for a new Call of Duty, which I think is fine. And they say uh, this article I that has nothing to do with uh, uh, the Microsoft acquisition. And I think that's bullshit. I think it totally does. No, I don't necessarily think so because as soon as the st a studio finishes a Call of Duty, they get right to work on the next one. So, yes, uh, Modern Warfare 2 is probably coming out this year, but they're also probably already working on the next Call of Duty already. Because mm -hmm. remember, we get a Call of Duty every year. There's at least three studios working on a Call of Duty game. So, I don't know, I don't know who did Vanguard. Was it Sledgehammer? Um, I couldn't that, tell you. Let's say it was Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer, Treyarch, and Infinity Ward are the three studios. If Infinity Ward is making this year's game and Sledgehammer made last year, then that means Treyarch's game was supposed to come out next year. Um, it, 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 did we read the update? Uh, well, let's read it now. Activision has reached out to IGN with a statement on the report that 2023's Call of Duty release was being delayed to 2024. We have an exciting slate of premium and free-to-play Call of Duty experiences for this year, next year, and beyond. Reports of anything otherwise are incorrect. We look forward to sharing more details when the time is right. IGN has followed up with Activision to ask if this was a direct denial of the claims in Bloomberg's piece that specifically... That's specifically the typical major November Call of Duty release in 2023 would be delayed to 2024 and will update the story accordingly. So they didn't uh, confirm or deny. <laughs> that was no. a, that was a terrible statement. Like it, it, it says well, it says they have exciting premium and free to play content this year, next year and beyond. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't mean all that doesn't mean that. There's gonna, they're gonna, there's gonna be a brand new Call of Duty this year and next year. Yeah, it could it just, just be content. That, yeah, it could be a DLC pack. Could be literally anything. Yeah. So uh, could be, the, a, could be a Black Ops remake. Could be a Black Ops remake. You don't know. So yeah, uh, I, I'm still willing to bet that they're gonna delay it, even if they don't, even if Activision isn't delaying it right now. Microsoft will step in and delay it. <laughs> right. So. Hey, guess what? I almost have this freaking Joy-Con done. Already? Wow. Yeah, look at that. I thought you gave up. I did give up, and then I was I I, I went back. Uh hey. Thank you, Lieutenant, for the four hundred bits. Alrighty, I'm gonna head to bed. Good night. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you for the for the biddies. Uh, Mark Zach, thank you for the six months. Uh, Martin Bernal, thank you for the three months. Thank you for making the absolute, my absolute favorite podcast right now, boys. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Martin Berthal, yeah. for the three months. And Luke Antone, thank you for the 28 months. I appreciate it. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, Wood's here. Hello, Wood. Word of mouth yeah. helps that game a lot. I bought it because RGT said it was good and I actually really enjoyed it. I don't know what we were talking about. Probably Guardians. Guardians. Oh yeah. Guardians. He played that. Yeah. Uh guys. It's that time right now. Oh Do it. boy, I can't believe it. I feel like uh I like to talk about this a lot. Usually when people, uh, when you're like, wow, I can't believe that guy did that. Or how could that guy afford that apartment? Or how could this guy like, yeah. you know, something like, I can't believe that he was able to 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 get that job or whatever. Uh, it's always this. 
Never ask a woman her age. Never. Never ask a man his salary. And never ask an indie musician why his parents' names are blue on Wikipedia. It took me a second to get that, but I I appreciate it. Because if they're blue, it means that they're somebody. And that's the only reason why they're famous indie musicians is because their parents were somebody. It took sure me until helps. it took me until working in the city with all these other people who all had like you know were making the same amount as me, and I was like, how can these people afford these apartments? They're from all over the country. They're from like the middle of nowhere, yeah. and they come to New York and they get an apartment, and I'm over here living in Long Island with my parents, can't afford anything. What's going? Oh, rich parents. Every single one of them, rich parents. Anyway, that's my uh, my soapbox. Uh, guys, we'll talk to you now. Yes, uh, starting with the comments from last week's Wolf Den Podcast left on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, first up, we have Muhammad Hader, who says, watching the Wolf Bros try to do math makes me my everything hurt. We're not calculators. Come on. Yeah. Can't do that. I I will forever laugh in the face of my math teachers who tell me that we will not have we would not have a calculator in real life all, all the time and yet here i am with a magical phone oh. that is a calculator that i bring with me all the time i thought you were about to pull out a ti-89 or whatever i think my wife has one of course she does so it's 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 the the state gives you one <laughs> yeah no they don't you have to buy it oh that's true that's true uh, and it's like a hundred dollars still, even though it's like yeah. it's like thirty year old technology. Yeah, it's it's you know friggin' the the Game and Watch Legend of Zelda edition is more powerful than a T five eighty six calculator. A Y says, I always feel like you are trolling with us with your opinions, but then I realize you are serious, and I feel sad for you guys. <laughs> what did we, what did we talk about last week? We were ranking this the uh, the gaming platforms like the, the digital platforms oh. xbox live ps plus so we were right uh yeah. the papa john it's him oh hey you can buy a year of gold and then a month of game pass ultimate and it'll upgrade the year of gold to a year of ultimate coming out at 75 dollars for a year of game pass ultimate that's a couple of hoops it sounds like yeah and that does seem like it I don't see how that would benefit Microsoft at all financially (laughs) because you are essentially you are ripping them off. Yeah, no, that's what he said. He said because I remember last week we were talking about how you can't get uh, Xbox Live or it's like hard to get Xbox Live by itself. Um, And you can't you can't pay for a year of goal, a year of Game Pass Ultimate. Right. You could only wait. What? No, you can't get a year of Ultimate. No, you pay for it month by month. There's oh, no right, buy it right, all right. At once. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, it's like it's it's weird. Getting these services ends up being weird. Like it's not as yeah. simple as it used to be. Yeah. Um, but he's saying that that's the strat: is you get a year of live first and then upgrade it. Yeah. Can you even get a year of live? Because I saw it in three months. You can. You just have to look for it. I don't think you can get it from Microsoft directly. You have to get like the cards. Okay. Uh, anyway, we also had stretched in ink. Who says I don't know if you sketched. know, but sketched in ink, sketched, Mister Illustrator. Yeah, but I'm not a, a, a linguisticist. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you know, but Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare Two aren't remix of the old games of the same titles. They're rebrandings. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the stories are different. The gameplay of the new one from leaks are that it's similar to Modern Warfare 2019, which is the same engine as Warzone. Small details, but I figured I'd bring it up. I hate to be that guy, but anyways, I really enjoy the podcast. Well, thank you, uh, Sketched in Ink. I didn't know that. I thought uh, it was. I feel like... Thing. What's the difference between... <laughs> the? T- I mean, really, the finer details here and there... It, it, Call of Duty's been the same since Modern Warfare. No, but Modern Warfare had a had a unique story. It did, and then it's pretty much been the same since. Uh, David Barber says, "Yeah, Game Pass is the closest to S tier, in my opinion. Only thing holding it back is that while they are putting exclusives on day one, they haven't released 
anything great. Halo is their headliner and is kind of already over. Great for playing your third party games without breaking the bank, though. I still haven't played uh, Forza, but yeah. um, I have downloaded it and I opened it up and it it benchmarks your computer for you. It, it, it First really? of all, it, it tries to uh, just give you the best settings for your hardware. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't recognize your computer or you have like unique hardware or whatever, it will run a benchmark. And the benchmark is it just plays a game. Like, like it runs a bunch of shit and then it just yeah. plays a mock game at like whatever settings it thinks will work best. And then it okay. gives you a rating at the end and it says, do you want to use these settings? And it's like, okay. And then it just, okay. and then it just works. That's, That's as far cool. as I got in Forza. And I thought that was yeah. awesome. <laughs> uh, but uh, I hear great things about it. So I look forward to playing. Yeah. That. It seems like a good deal for Game Pass. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, more first party games are going to come to Game Pass. Mm -hmm. you know down the road and now that they have like all these other studios activision blizzard included that's just more games to add to game pass true all right now we're in the chat i i really have to pee and i can't hold it anymore so i will be right back. all right you do that and i will talk to chat guys listen i have been doing this i'm so i actually put the wrong back on it at first this stupid thing i don't know what to do with this it's like not going in it's the freaking like oh it's in Oh, it's in. Oh, it's popping out. Okay, I'm going to pretend like everything's fine. I really want to get this done before the podcast is over. This is just the right Joy-Con, though. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, it snapped in wrong. F. I do like that, though, how the top is a different color. Forza and Flight Simulator are the only reasons I bought an Xbox. Wow, why did that come off? I screwed it in. Flight Simulator is a also a good Game Pass deal, though. All right, so that's just not going to screw in. That's just going to... Oh, no, that came off. All right, I got to do this later. Not going to happen. Emily Rogers claims that Intelligence Systems next Fire Emblem project is nearly finished with development. Okay, I don't... I've never played a Fire Emblem. I only like those characters in Smash Brothers. Um, you still drink coffee, Bob? What do you mean? I mean, not right now. I'm, like, done. What, you think I'm going to Stop. Uh, I came so close to getting an OLED switch this week. Well, did you have the old switch? Have you heard about the developer of Poppy's Playtime trying to sell NFTs based on the lore of the game? I don't know what Poppy's Playtime is. What are you guys... What is happening? Am I out of touch? You guys are saying all these things that I... I am not interested. Oh, it's this fucking day. It's one of the, it's one of these Dan games. This is a Dan that cyber channel game. A spooky, scary game. Will the next Nintendo console be a new kind of switch? And if so, will you be able to transfer all your games over to it? I, I believe it will be a new type of switch. I mean, they already had too much success with it. The problem is Nintendo likes to do like a, like a wacky gimmicky thing. And who knows what they will change hopefully it's not uh gonna gonna uh ruin what's already great about the switch but uh i don't i mean i hope that they fix the account system that's what we spent the whole beginning of this podcast talking about i will hey I'm back um there was a chat for you will oh. do you know what i have to read to catch up before justice league 75 no. <laughs> uh, just read it. I'm sure whatever you need to read, they will tell you what to read. Like, there's usually like an editor marking telling you what what to look for for some for hyper specific uh, instances. But just dive in. Go for it. Wood made a bet and won. So now you have to make a stream with Wood on Scoot's Twitch channel. Uh, why do I have to do anything? It's <laughs> their bet. This gains nothing from me. Yeah. But I did. What did I, didn't I want to do something? I did. What, no, never mind. What was the bet? They did Monkey Mondays together. 
Okay. Anyway, Nintendo's next system will have a gimmick where you have to close your eyes while playing games to use your imagination while the game itself only provides sound. Okay. <laughs> sounds like a fun yeah. Sounds like a fun time. Should should be cheap. We'll read something cuz I almost have this Joy-Con done. All right. And uh, I want to do it before the podcast ends. Martin Bernal, do you uh you guys watching the Uncharted movie? I think it will probably suck. I uh, agree. Yeah, I'm not hearing good things about it. Uh, I don't intend on seeing it anytime soon, especially not paying for it. Um, you trying to pirate it? Yeah, I, I'm not. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna bother pirating that. I'll wait till it's mm -hmm. on like Netflix or something. I don't know, man. Some games don't need to be movies. Uh, yeah, I heard not great things about it. Uh, the reviews yeah. didn't seem uh, too hot. No. Uh, I got the right joy. I see the sun. Will, thoughts on the Batman with what's been released so far? I bought my ticket for it. I'm like the only one who doesn't have a be, ticket. I'm upset. It, it will be the first movie I have seen since March of 2020. And that movie was Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> it's true. Uh, that was my last movie, too. Yeah. There's so, so much. I feel there's so much I want to see in theaters. I want to see Jackass. I want to see uh, uh, Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, still haven't seen Spider Man. I was tempted to go, but then Omicron hit, and you know I didn't want to potentially get that and bring it home to my pregnant wife. I mean, so, it, it came out the week I got COVID. So yes, <laughs> I was actually I didn't buy a ticket, but I wanted I was gonna go that weekend. Yeah. Um. Still don't know when that's coming out. Hooray! It's got that little color on the top, and I think that's pretty cool. Yay! Oh, yeah, that's a nice little pop of color. Oh, the home button's like messed up. Oh well. No one needs to know that. That'll be our little secret. <laughs> yeah. I'm not <laughs> opening that up with, again. What's wrong with the home button? It just it's a little mushy. Oh, it works though, so who cares? Yeah. It's not like you press that all the time. <sighs> Guys. Hi, it's just me. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolf. if you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash wolf Den Podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolf Den Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us, because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. I've never seen so many people streaming in my life. Like, like my whole, like, follower list is full right now. There's a million people streaming. Um, I don't know who to raid right now. Guys, uh, I'm not going to stream probably till like Thursday. I got a lot to do. I got a video coming out. Hopefully Thursday. I've been releasing videos on Friday. I don't like doing that. This week's a banger, though. Uh, it's a Nintendo Switch video. And oh, I think you you'll really enjoy it. That's why I'm trying really hard to get it out on Thursday. Oh, Dan's live. Go watch. Uh, no. Fuck Dan. Because I think we just raided him. <laughs> go, watch, uh, go watch AJ. He's doing a tournament, I think. Uh, Smash go. Brothers, go see AJ. I will see you guys later. Goodbye. Bye.